Greetings, greetings, greetings. Family, friends, and the world. This is Mikael, Eric Harris, better known as the Juice, also known as the Alkaline Water Guy. How is everyone doing this evening? This is the first day of the week, which is, this is the evening of the first day, which is July 14th. That's right, because tomorrow I have, a, um, I have an appeal. So today is July 14th, 2024, and tonight, if we call this tonight, uh, which is the day of quote-unquote Sunday, um, this is Fight Fire with Truth. Fight Fire with Truth. And if anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to ask or share or talk about, uh, come on in and you can do that. Then we can build from that point. But other than that, um, tonight is Fight Fire with Truth. And this is July 14th, 2024. And um, other than that, this is Mikael Eric Garrett, better known as the Juice, also known as Alkaline Water Guy. We're live on YouTube, we're live on Instagram, and we're live on Zoom. So we're live on YouTube, and you, the YouTube is Juice Pro 2012, or you can put in your search engine, um, Michael the Juice Harris. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L space T-H-E space H uh, J-U-I-C-E space H-A-R-R-I-S. Yeah, it's another spot I like this song. And that's a 740 point. This is nice. I like this track here. But as I was saying, um, this is uh Mike, you can come to uh you can meet me on, on Michael the Juice Harris, um M I C H A E L space T H E space J U I C E space H A R R I S on YouTube. And um, also, uh, we have a TikTok, which is Michael the Juice Hair. It's compressed as well, but it's Michael the Juice Hair. We're also on Instagram at Lakaim underscore the Juice. That's L K H Y Y M underscore the Juice. L K H Y Y M underscore T H E J U I C E uh, on Instagram and on TikTok. And we're also live here, and this is going to be our full recording on Zoom, which we will trans um we will um transfer to YouTube, Rumble, and Patreon. YouTube, Rumble, and Patreon. Now you'll find my links also in the post, but right now I'd like to give it to you at the beginning. And at the end I will give you contact so I can contact me directly, which is my email and my number. My emails and my number. And also I want to let you know I'm also back on Facebook. My Facebook is Mikael Harris. That's M I apostrophe C H A E L space H A R R I S. You'll find me on Facebook. Um, and there, like I say, uh, on Facebook, you'll find me there. And uh, that's my new Facebook page, which I'm uploading information as well. So, other than that, I hope everybody's having a great evening. And I hope everybody enjoyed the information that was that was given yesterday at Assembly of the Righteous, which was uh, the beginning, the anointing spirit, uh, darkness, light, day, and night. That's what that was yesterday. But today, I don't have a, um, I don't have an actual um, post because I didn't know what I was going to speak on today. I know tomorrow I have the, uh, I should speak on Babylon. That's what I should speak on. Because I know tomorrow I have the appeal, and I know tomorrow evening I'm probably going to share the information on the appeal. But I'm probably going to take that information and, and share that on, on Freedom NGO, which is Wednesday. So I'll be doing Babylon tomorrow night or tomorrow evening. But just to share with you what I have. Alkaline, uh, this is okra water. I've been, sh I've been sharing about okra water and what it does for you. So I decided to put a little bit to the test. So, trying to stay healthy. And okra is always good cooked and raw.
Well, other than that, hope everybody having a great day. And we get ready to go on with, start with our prayer. And after the prayer, come on with our theme song, which is Keep It To Yourself. And after that, let's see where we go from there. But other than that, I think I shared everything up in the beginning. I'm going to pause it. Bless be thou, Father of the universe, that bring forth all living creatures forth from the earth. Bless be thou, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Bless be Father of Israel. Bless be Father to our tribe of Israel. Thank you, Father, for all you've done, been doing, and planning to do. We ask you to keep giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life, health, and strength, food, shelter, and clothing. Let us be happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, and prosperous in all that we do. We ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we may help lead and guide others in your knowledge, your word, your ruach, and your way. We ask you to keep us in every way, Father, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, or spiritual. We also ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we can help lead and guide others in your knowledge, your word, and your ruach. We also ask you, Father, forgive us and our ancestors for the sins that we have done against you, your word, your law, and your ruach. We ask you to lift the, the, the spirit of deep sleep from off of us and awaken us in this day and time to allow us to know your word, your wisdom, your knowledge, and to learn how to use it wisely and to allow others to awaken to your word as well. We bless, we bless you, praise you, and thank you for all you've done to us, for us, and with us, and bring us out of the great turmoil that we've been going through and thanking you for being with us in this day and time and beyond. Forgive us and our ancestors for the things we have done against you and the word, Father. We ask you to keep us in every way and keep your arm of protection around us at all times. Again, we ask you, Father, to help us in every way, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, or spiritual. And in all these things we pray, hallelujah. 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 All right, all right. And we're going to get started with Keep It To Yourself, which is the theme song for the night. I and like it goes like this. What's going on with the juice? Don't forget, everybody. We've been off for the last almost month of June. But we've just started back and we're in our, we're in our new place, our new home. All right, y'all. Like I was just sharing with you, we're in our new home now, in our new abode, and um, it's very relaxing, you know, much more space. And I'm just thankful. The Father is really blessing, and things are really happening. Love y'all. This is called Keep It To Yourself. One of the first songs I came up with when I was in Europe, when I was touring. You know, some people being your ear trying to tell you what you don't know, but they, what, and they don't really know you. They tell you what you don't know. And this is my mind. Keep It To Yourself. Keep It To Yourself. End up coming up with the first person I was in Europe. Finished it when I was over here. It goes like this. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep 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 to yourself, keep keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep 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 to yourself, keep keep to yourself. Let me tell you, we're going around town. People always trying to put me down. People always talking this and that and don't even know the real facts. They only ask what's going on before they start talking stone. People always trying to talk quick. They always trying to be slick. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep 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 to yourself, keep keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep, keep, keep to yourself, keep, keep to yourself. What a lot of people need to do when it comes to 
negativity. Uh oh, look like this one went out already. Let me tell you what I found around this little crazy town. Something from me to you, and something I like you to do. Clack. Come on, keep yourself smack. Keep yourself smoke. Keep yourself dope. Keep yourself lying. Cheating. Stealing. Since this killing. Keep yourself, keep yourself. Keep yourself, keep yourself. Keep to yourself, 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 lust, come on, keep to yourself, but disillusion, prostitution, gossip, hatred, disrespect, premarital sex, keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, 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 keep to yourself. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to pick up the Bible and read the truth. The more you read, the more you learn. Because we're all really God's son. It gives us a magic turn. Wisdom and knowledge. We must learn. Or getting closer to the Lord, you see the commandments. It's the way to be. But all that other stuff in the streets, keep to yourself for you and me. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep 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 to yourself. Keep keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep 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 to yourself. Keep keep to yourself. Now y'all, what just happened? Instagram just went out. So Instagram, you're gonna miss the prayer. Uh. You know, the prayer in the beginning, um, where I share with all the information of um of when of what should I say all my links and stuff like that, but we haven't got started yet anyway. So Instagram, this is part one for you because you cut off and I just cut you back on. So it's still part one for you, but we're already in progress. But we are already in progress with YouTube and on Zoom, which is the full version that we put on YouTube. Instagram and uh, Patreon. So, if you're not, if you didn't get the full, it's because we just started for you because you cut off for some odd reason. And this is the uh, theme song called "Keep It to Yourself." That's my theme song called "Keep It to Yourself." You know. Um, We'll start back with the uh, supporting song. This is supporting song um, that's on one of my playlists that I just had playing, which is one of my uh, my house tracks. Two of them. I'm gonna cut up a little bit. So, other than that, I didn't come. I didn't have a post that I wanted. I mean, shout out, I didn't have anything I was gonna start off with today because I always allow the spirit. To lead and guide me, right? So by me letting the spirit lead and guide me, uh, you know, I always ask the spirit to lead and guide me to share information put out there. So I don't have a topic today, but I do have something in my mind that I want to share. Okay, let me get this real quick. And there was something on Instagram that I've seen not too long ago. We'll just come back in. So we'll just come back in. I'm gonna find. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, what I wanted to share with you. Now, Shane, there's something I want to share that uh, this guy did some research. There we go. There we go. And I also want to share with you that I've shared with you a moment ago. Open water. I was sharing, uh, someone was sharing this on, on Instagram. If that's why I saw it. I don't know if it's on TikTok or Instagram.
The open water pork is pretty good for you. I bet that with cucumbers, lemons, would be good. Let me show you what I found what I'm seeing earlier. And it's something that's been said a long time ago. Some people don't pay attention to this. Now, we all we all are still growing in the knowledge of the creator in scriptures. We all are still growing. So it's information that we're coming to know that was put before us, like I always tell you. Like I always tell you, right? Just gonna go back a little bit in here. <laughs> Wait for this to come in. So we have the theme song, uh, supporting theme song playing in the background, you know, while we're waiting. It's a good idea as well. But like I'm saying that we all are still growing in the knowledge of the information. We all have fell in, fallen from the grace of the creator by our ancestors sinning. By our ancestors sinning, and the father said what he was going to do. He said that if I if we if we didn't keep the law. He's going to send us in a land that we know not. There we should serve other gods, wood and stone, gods our fathers have known, right? So by this happening, I'm trying to make sure I find the right one. And I think, yeah, this is it. I see which one it is. So the key is this. People have to understand where, where we are today, where we are, the position we're in, where we've come from, where we've come to, where we're growing to. Can you tell me this thing that the video to stop again? This thing just stopping all of a sudden on its own. I don't know if someone is doing this. What's this thing? Video just stopping on its own. Uh, do anybody have, do y'all know if anybody has control of the situation going on like this? It's third time, or well, second time, and it stopped on its own like that. Instagram, look like you stopped on your own twice for some odd reason. I don't know what happens. I don't know if someone is controlling the situation from another end, another angle, but Instagram went off twice. But other than that, uh, as I was just sharing with you, there's a lot of things going on today that we don't know about. Uh, I said a lot of things that we're learning today that we were unknowledgeable about, right? So by us being unknowledgeable about the things that we didn't know, we got to understand we all are still growing. Everybody out there, not everybody, all those who are out there who's acting like they just know it all, just because they're reading what's in their face, what's actually in their face by the scriptures, it's a part of the curse, whether y'all understand that or not. This is why we're supposed to seek and research. Now, a lot of things in the book, you'll see names have been changed, but the story is still true. When it comes to the law and the prophets. Now, the New Testament is it's manipulation there. You got a lot of truth in there, but there's manipulation there as well. But it's all according to the curse of the Father that He said we're going to do that's going to happen in this day and time. And we, in these days, we're going to start to awaken from the curse. So now it's up to us to understand that we don't know it all and we got to consider information that comes to us. And as we start to consider the information that comes, we start to understand that, okay, each one teach one. And, and, and where information comes, just like it says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Let me hit that real quick. Daniel 12. Woo, I thought that was, I don't know, I don't know, I thought that was uh, pouring out. Daniel 12 and 4 states this. It states. See, this is after one, two, and three 
when the father prophesied the day was going to happen in the last days, which is the days that's happening right now. But verse 4 is this right here. It says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the word and seal the book. Shut up the word and seal the book, even to the time of the end. See, the book has been sealed. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge is being increased in this day and time right now. And the reason I'm sharing this point of view at this point in time, at this very moment, is because what I'm about to share with you at this point right here. Something that this brother, well, I'm saying brother, I'm going to say brother, he's somebody that's searching knowledge, so he's a brother, brother, I'm going to say brother. My favorite, my favorite, but this right here is something I want y'all to check out. Oh, come on. We're not supposed to be calling upon the name God. I'm going to show you. So I'm reading from the book of Enoch, which was removed from our Bibles. This is referring to a type of angels and their names. And the third was named Godriel, or shortened would be God. He it is who shown the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve. So this is literally talking about Satan, the one who led astray Eve, right, in the garden. His true name is God Rio, which shortened would be God. Now, if you go on Google and you type in God definition, you'll see this little name pop up next to it, G-A-D, yeah. God. The same way it's pronounced in Enoch with that little vowel point above the A. Now look at this. Baal God means Lord of Fortune. Why do you think on the back of our money it says in God we trust? It's not talking about the Most High of the Bible. It's a reference to Satan, the evil one. Now check this out. Every time you see Baal in the scriptures, it actually is just the Hebrew word for Lord. So we're not supposed to be calling him Lord either. All right, go into the Blue Letter Bible, click on Baal, and you will see it literally means Lord, which is the name they planted over the name Yahuwah 7,000 times in the scriptures. Every time you see in all caps, the Lord, it was originally his name, Yahuwah. If you don't believe me, go fact check me. I have studied to show myself approved, and I'm just revealing to you guys what I have found. Don't shoot the messenger. Now, remember what I said. We're not supposed to be calling him Lord because it actually means Baal. Go to Jeremiah 23, verse 27, whose true name is Yermiyahu, who attempt to cause my people to forget my name for Baal or Lord. Remember, guys, Satan is literally the father of lies. Look at this. However, the word Baal means Lord. Look it up. Satan's true name is God. We're not supposed to be calling upon the name God. I'm going to show you. So I'm reading from the book of Enoch, which was removed from our Bibles. This is referring to a type of angels and their names. And the third was named Godriel, or shortened would be God. He it is who shown the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve. So this is literally talking about Satan, the one who led astray Eve, right, in the garden. His true name is God Rio, which shortened would be God. Now, if you go on Google and you type in God definition, you'll see this little name pop up next to it, G-A-D, God. The same way it's pronounced in Enoch with that little vowel point above the A. Now look at this. Baal God means Lord of Fortune. Why do you think on the back of our money it says in God we trust? It's not talking about the Most High of the Bible. It's a reference to Satan, the evil one. Now check this out. Every time you see Baal in the scriptures, it actually is just the Hebrew word for Lord. So we're not supposed to be calling him Lord either. Right, go into the Blue Letter Bible, click on Baal, and you will see it literally means Lord, which is the name they planted over the name Yahuwah 7,000 times in the scriptures. Every time you see in all caps, the Lord, 
It was originally his name, Yahuwah. If you don't believe me, go fact check me. I have studied to show myself approved, and I'm just revealing to you guys what I have found. Don't shoot the messenger. Now remember what I said. We're not supposed to be calling him Lord because it actually means Baal. Go to Jeremiah 23, verse 27. His true name is Yermiyahu, who attempt to cause my people to forget my name for Baal, or Lord. Remember, guys, Satan is literally the father of lies. Look at this. However, the word Baal means Lord. Look it up. Satan's true name is God. Okay. With now, just looking at that within itself. We all are still learning. Now, I've come to learn this alone before I even left Mississippi uh, about the word Lord and the word, well, not really God, but I knew that in, in Europe, the word name, the name was Gott, G-O-T-T. -T. They, uh, they called the word, the word for God, they said Gott. That's what they call it, which is in Anglo-Saxon. So we have to understand and understand that we all are growing back to the father when it comes to the knowledge of the father and things that we need to know words are so you know words are powerful the certain words we use and certain words the certain words we use and don't use and how we use them don't forget these are spells words are spells so a lot of people don't even realize how they use words in this day and time they think that when they went to school the schools taught you to use words in a certain way but yet still, if they taught you to use certain words in a certain way, they didn't teach you the correct English or correct grammar of those words. And if they did, you would be able to stand in court. You can't stand in court because they have a whole different language in court. I'm just sharing that with you because a lot of things we think is correct is not. And they're teaching you incorrectly to keep you under a spell. So... Mm. The spell, the spell, uh, cause right, right now, uh, it's some more information I'm gonna share with you in a few moments that I have shared before coming to my uh, our new place. But I'm probably bring those words out tonight as well. But just just to share with you the fact that Lord means ball or bell, as we see. Some people say it means other things, but we come to understand that we know the meaning behind some of the things we say, but we got to start being particular about the things we say as well. Just like in Isaiah 68 and 4, and not Isaiah, Psalms 68 and 4. It tells us how to call the Father, but it gives us a name that is not correct. And why do I say it gives us a name that's not correct? Because there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet, and there's no, and the J wasn't invented the J wasn't invented from what from my calculator when I researched to 1604. Here we go, right here. I'm right at it. Thank you, Father. All right. Now, right here, Psalm 68 and 4 states this. But let me start at 1. I, like to, I want to go right to it because that's the problem we have today. A lot of people cut and paste, and they don't read the whole situation of what's being said. So Right now, we're going to go to Isaiah 68 and 1 through 4. It states, let Yah, but it says, let God arise. But it says, really, Yah, let Yah arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. You see that? See, it's the first thing we need to be talking about right there. It's talking about the enemies who actually put the word God there and have changed the world the way it is today. The third and fourth generation. That hate him, which is the Greek and the Roman Empire, which is stated in the second commandment in uh, uh, verse 5. In verse 5. Third and fourth generation of them that hate me, but showing mercy unto a thousand of them that love me and keep my commandments. But let's keep it going. Let, let Yah, says God, arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Verse 2. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of Yah. It says God, but we know it's talking about Yah or the Creator 
or the universal consciousness, which is the creator of all the all of all. See, when you start doing giving attributes to the point where you know you're talking about the all of all, the most high, Yah as it states, you know, all these different ways that rec recognize the create recognize the creator, that way you'll actually be known or let it be known, or you're recognizing who you're speaking of and speaking to. Verse three. But let the righteous be glad. You see this? But let the righteous, but who are righteous? Those who keep the commandments, those who keep the law. That's all the Father required for us to do from Genesis to Revelation, to keep the commandments, keep the law. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God, Yah. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Verse 4. Sing unto Yah, it says God, but you know, sing unto Yah, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by, by his name. It says Jah, but there's no such thing as a J. So they're still trying to guide you away from saying the correct, the correct word because the law is his name. This is just a representative of who he's supposed to be. Yah, Yahuwah. Some people say Yahweh. But the point is, when you say Yah, we're understanding or understanding who we're referring to compared to God. By his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Right? A father of the, no, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is Yah in his holy habitation. You know, but it can go on. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but my main thing is to mainly go to what it states that his name is Yah. Here it says Jah, and we got to understand a lot of things have been modified in order to keep us away from the creator. And the reason why, I'm going to give you the understanding to that. Um, Isaiah chapter 83. Now, uh, I keep saying Isaiah. Thank, I, thanks for I'm catching it because usually I say it and I be gone. Psalms 83. Psalm chapter 83. Right here. The reason why, this is your key. This is why they're trying to get us to forget the name of the Father or even how to call upon him. This is the reason why the Father said that until we return back to him, we got to seek him with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole being, our whole soul. That means you got to, it's not just in your face. You got to dig because the manipulation is what's in your face. Until you study this word, you don't know. If you're going by with the preachers and the, and that the, the preachers come from the seminaries and the schools of the Roman Catholic schools, the colleges, you going by what they taught, the doctrine that they said. And everybody following the doctrine is off anyway. If you're following a doctrine, I don't care what the New Testament say. I don't care what you, if you follow a teaching or a doctrine, you are all. You're following a religion. The word is law, and that's just, it is what it is. You study the law, keep the law, and you find. That's all it is. But right here, Psalms 83. Keep not thou silent. Keep not thou silent. Oh, I'm going to say Yah instead of God, because I just shared with you. Instead of saying God, it states what God is supposed to mean. So now that we are all on one accord, we're going to just say Yah at this point, this point on, because we understand what the word God means. Keep not thou silent, O Yah. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Yah. Verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lift up the head. See, they that hate thee have lift up the head. It's going to show you the people that hate them besides the third and fourth generation of, uh, of a certain being or individuals that hate them that actually took over the world, which is the Greek and the Roman Empire. A lot of people don't get it. A lot of people can't understand it. For lo, thine enemies make a torment. And they that hate thee, hate thee, have lifted up the head. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people 
and consulted against thy hidden ones. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. We're a nation of, we're a nation of people today. We just don't know it. A lot of us don't know who we are. If you call yourself black, colored, uh, 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 um, nigger, African-American, even American. Well, this land, is, they, they then took it over and called it American. But the point is, if you call yourself by any other name than a, a national, if you don't get nationalized by a nationality that has a land, a language, and a culture, which our culture is right here, which is Israel culture is right here. I'm reading it to you now, which is from Genesis to Malachi is our culture. Actually, our culture from Genesis to Deuteronomy. From, from, uh, from uh, Deuteronomy to Malachi is certain things that shows you examples about our culture as well. Such as Ruth. The story of Ruth. Not Ruth herself, but her story. Such as uh, Esther. That's a story. But history and our culture and things that has happened and things that we're supposed to do, you got to look in there for our culture. And stop reading this as a book. That's this Old Testament is our, what shall I say, the Torah and Tanakh, which is so-called Old Testament, is our history, our history. Verse three: They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Verse four: They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation." that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now, some people want to want to um, challenge that. Let me give you a, a, a different challenge. Let me give you to understand another challenge where some people want to go to. Some people want to say Yashara, Yasharan. Uh, um, um, hold on. Let me get to, let me get to Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, I believe that's five or six. I believe that's 44 and 5. Hold on real quick. Isaiah 44. Let me give you some understanding to these names that some people have a controversy with. Right here, Isaiah 44 and 5. It says, I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm going to come back and read the whole thing, but I'm going to read number 5 for right now. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand to the Lord, and shall name himself by the name of Israel. But up here in verse 2, it says, thus said the Lord, as it says, let's see, we, 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 we're still, um, we're still, uh, uh, how we say, not acclimated, but we still uh, uh, we still programmed to saying what you see. But we understand, we understand. Thus says Yah. We put it like that. Thus says Yah that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. See, I used to be Yah and everything, but see, I have to understand that I have to bring, I have to condescend with people whose mind isn't on that level. And by their mind is not on that level, that's the reason why I go with God and Lord and stuff like that, to bring them up on a, a different level. You have to condescend in order to bring the rise to, to help other people ascend. So, uh, verse 2. Thus said Yah, that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which is Israel, which will help thee fear not, O Yaakov. So it says Jacob, there was no Jacob, but we got this Yaakov, my servant, and thou Yezron. See, Yezron is right there, whom I have chosen. Israel, but here it says Yezron. Yeshuron. Yeshuron. It says Jezron, but it's not a J. It's Yezron. They keep trying to see they keep putting them J's in there. We got to understand, we got to stop putting things in this proper order. Everything. Some of us are going to get it, some of us not. Some many of us, many of our people are still stuck, but they're not going no further than what the preachers say. They're not going no further than what the what's right in front of their face. They're not even going outside the Bible. 
But you got many that's serious, and the father's leading and guiding them, and some of them are coming out of the church. Whether that church is good or bad, many are coming out because they're following the spirit, not religion. That's the difference. So I'm going to come back to 44. But right now, as I was saying, we're here at 80, uh, Psalms 83. I just shared with you what the true name of the father is, which is Yah. Or shall I say, the representation of his name. Because his true name is actually the law. His true name is the law. Yah is just representative of who, we, who we're recognizing. This is what people are off at. People are looking at Yah or the creator as a man, as a physical being. The creator is universal consciousness. And universal consciousness goes by his laws. His laws is the law that he's given us to live by. Then he has laws that supersede those laws, which are your spiritual, which I say your universal laws. Cause and effect, uh, Dharma, karma, uh, many other. Like I said, it's 20 of them, as far as I know. 20 universal laws. Twenty universal laws, but back to Psalms eighty-three, verse four again. They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance." Verse five. For they have consulted together with one consent. They all came together as one, with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They're confederate against the Father because of us. Because we are the chosen. We are the Father's anointed. We were anointed in the wilderness in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24 by the blood of an ox. That was the blood anointing. And that anointing still was upon our people until this day and time when that, with, uh, after the 3,000 year and the, uh, after 3,000 years, when the, when, when the prophet said, if you, tear the, if you tear this temple down, I'll raise it the third day. One, one day to the father is 1,000 years. After 3,000 years, we are being awoken. And also, we just come out of the 400-year uh, uh, that was spoken of in Genesis 15, verse 12 to 14. We just come out of that. So this is where you find Re uh, Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses. The two witnesses is Judah and Israel. Or you can look at Jacob and Judah. Or shall I say Jacob and Israel. See, Israel is the anointed of the father. Or shall we say, as we see over here, Yeshuron. Yeshuron is the anointed of the father. Jacob is the ones who are dead Israel. Well, I mean those who don't know who they are, the ones who don't know how to keep the law, the ones who don't know how to keep the Father's way. That's Jacob. And you'll see it simultaneous throughout the book, Jacob and Israel. Then you come to start seeing Israel or Judah in Israel. You start to see him. If you read and study, you start to see he's talking about us as nations, not individual people. But he deal with us as individual people, which is his prophets and his servants, to go and do a, do a work. So as we said, verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Then we see who it is. Who is they? Who is all these people? Who is all these different nations? Who are these people in charge that is, that's against the creator and his people? Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom. Who is Edom? Esau. Number one. He's number one. You know why he's number one? He's number one because he got the blessing in Genesis 27, verse 39 and 40. He's the head of it all, as you see, the first, the first. Then what do we got? And the Ishmaelites. These are the so-called quote unquote Muslims. See. They are against the, well, I can't say all of them, but they were supposed to be a great nation. 
The father said they're going to be a great nation. I believe they're going to be 12 children or 12 of them. It's going to be a great nation as well. But the law comes through Israel. But these all have taken in one consent against the father. I don't care what the Quran say. I don't care what they got their information. What you say? You all right? I don't care what any other nation, any other doctrine say. Whatever. The father chose Israel and everything he said has been happening according to prophecy in this book. You have to understand the prophecy. If you don't understand it, you don't know it. If you don't know it, you don't know the father. You may think you know the father, but no, you don't, when I say the father, the universal consciousness is what I'm talking about. Who spoke through his prophets to speak to the people and write it down so you can get it. But let's keep it moving. The tabernacles of Edom, which is Esau, and the Ishmaelites. We know who the Ishmaelites is. That's Isaac's older brother. And his nation of people. Of, uh, and then it says of uh, Moab and the uh, Hagarim. We know who Moab is. Moab is of the Moabites. Which is the children of Lot. By his oldest daughter. These are the Moors that we have today. The Moabites which they call, which they have shortened down to call Moab at this time, but in today's time, it's, they're called the Moors, who became a great nation in the earth. They spread themselves abroad and made themselves known and was marrying a lot of these uh, Caucasians in Spain. That's the name I've been looking, I've been skipping that time. And this is where the marriage license started at, in Spain. But let's keep it moving. And the Hagarines, Verse 7, Gebal and Ammon. Ammon, Ammon, Ammon is, um, is the Ammonites. And the Ammonites are the Moabites' uh, brother. That's Lot's youngest daughter or second oldest daughter. Both of them made by incest. All right, whether y'all know that or not. That's Ammon. So you got Lot's children, which is Moab, which is the Moabites, and Ammon. And then you also have Esau, which is Jacob's actual brother. Then you got Ishmaelites, who is actually uh, Isaac's older brother. Then you got, and let me, I don't want to miss no names up here. Then you got the Hegarines. And then also you got the uh, Amalekites or Amalek. You got the Amalek. You got Amalek. And then you got the Philistines. With the in uh the inhabitants of Tyre, verse 8, Ashur also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. You see that? The children of Lot is the Moabites and the Ammonites. They helped the children of Lot. See, all these nations was against Israel. All these nations was against Israel because Israel is the head. Why are they head? Because the father gave them the um the blessing through Isaac when he was blind. But it was already told through Rebecca when she would have uh, Esau and Jacob in the womb. It was already told there. And that's what I'm going to get to you in a few minutes in Isaiah 44. Verse, uh, and uh, have, uh, I'm sorry, Ashur and is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Verse 9, do unto them as as unto the Midianites, as to Sisria, Sisria, as to Jabin, Yabin, might as well say, and at the brook of Kishon. I don't know if I should read it all the way down, but I mainly go through that just to give you the name. But it looks like it's more names as you go on down, but we know that all nations, all nations has turned and uh has come against Israel. All nations have turned against Israel. Why? Because. Keep not thou silent, O Yah. Hold not thy peace and keep not still, O Yah. For thy enemies make a torment and, thy, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. This is why. They have taken crafty counsel, crafty counsel against thy people. When they do... When you go against his people, you go against him. 
because he's within his people, especially in this day and time. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. It's us. Four, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. How do they do that? They take the land, language, heritage, your culture, your, 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 your mindset, and have changed everything. Change your culture, your heritage, and everything. That's how they cut you off from being a people. They don't have to kill you physically. They kill you mentally and spiritually. But this is because of our ignorance. We can't blame them because we, when I say we, our ignorance in doing the law. The father said the, the main reason why we're in the position we're in now is because we stopped doing the law. We stopped keeping the law. But they took crafty counsel in order to carry out the father's word. See, this is the whole point. Y'all got to understand, you can't be mad at the switch. You can't be mad at the one who's whooping you with the switch. You got to be mad at yourself, and this is where you put the lobe yourself and turn back to the father. This is what people don't understand. Y'all too busy mad at the Caucasians for the things that they have done because the father said they're going to, but it is also said that they didn't have to do as hard as they did too. They didn't have to be as hard as they was on or to us because we're not going to be like that because that's not in our nature. But we got to understand that's their nature. That's their nature and that's their being. So once we understand that we don't have to be mad at anybody else, we got to start turning to the creator and doing what we need to do to appease him, appease him and start keeping this law. Once we understand that, the faster we grow. The faster we grow as a people. Once we understand that, the faster we grow as a people, the faster we, we grow throughout the earth. And once we start keeping the law, then we understand, understand the Father's word. But we're too busy pointing the finger and, and, and saying this and that by everybody else without looking at the three fingers that instead of pointing, you got three fingers pointing back at you. You have to realize our ancestors went through certain things because they did certain things. And by them teaching their children and their children's children the things that they were doing, the children was in error. That's why the father said, and read Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18 is your key. Ezekiel chapter 18 is your key. You have to recognize Ezekiel 18 in order to understand where you are today. Where you are, the things, you, the things we are going through and to, and start to build from that point. Ezekiel 18 is your key. Other than that, the crafty council is the New Testament. Guess who the council is? The council of Nicaea. They took crafty council, and that council of Nicaea gave you a New Testament with four God spells. Let me give you that as well. Since I just gave you this with the situation, I'm gonna hit you one more time. With this, with this divine brother. name, before Baal. Here we go. Oh Lord, remember, guys, Satan is literally the father of lies. Look at this. However, the word Baal means Lord. Look it up. Satan's true name is God. That's We're that. not supposed to be calling upon the name God. I'm going to show you. So I'm reading from the Book of Enoch, which was removed from our Bibles. This is referring to a type of angels and their names. And the third was named Godriel, or shortened would be God. He it is who shown the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve. So this is literally talking about Satan, the one who led astray Eve, right, in the garden. His true name is Godriel, which shortened would be God. Now, if you go on Google and you type in, God definition. You'll see this little name pop up next to it, G-A-D. God. The same way it's pronounced in Enoch with that little 
vowel point above the A. Now look at this. Baal God means Lord of Fortune. Why do you think on the back of our money it says, in God we trust? It's not talking about the Most High of the Bible. It's a reference to Satan, the evil one. Now check this out. Every time you see Baal in the scriptures, it actually is just the Hebrew word for Lord. So we're not supposed to be calling him Lord either. All right, go into the Blue Letter Bible, click on Baal, and you will see it literally means Lord, which is the name they planted over the name Yahuwah 7,000 times in the scriptures. Every time you see in all caps, the Lord, it was originally his name, Yahuwah. If you don't believe me, go fact check me. I have studied to show myself approved, and I'm just revealing to you guys what I have found. Don't shoot the messenger. Now remember what I said. We're not supposed to be calling him Lord because it actually means Baal. Go to Jeremiah 23, verse 27, whose true name is Yermayahu, who attempt to cause my people to forget my name for Baal or Lord. Remember, guys, Satan is literally the father of lies. Look at this. However, the word Baal means Lord. Look it up. Satan's true name is God. So, I just mainly wanted to share that to you one, one more time before I uh, before I moved on. But there was something important there that I want y'all to understand that he said. He said something about um, Lord or God means, um, uh, what was it he was saying? He was saying something. I'm, I'm going to catch you real quick. Children of men, all the blows of death. I'm going to catch you in a few seconds. And he led astray Eve. So this is literally talking about when he talked about the one who led astray Eve, right? In the garden. His true name is God Rio. Okay. Which shortened would be God. Now, if you go on Google and you type in God definition, you'll see I want to talk about the name um, pop up next to it. The, the point of fortune. God. The same way it's pronounced in Enoch with that little vowel point above the A. Now look at this. Baal right. God means Lord of Fortune. What? Lord of Fortune. Baal God means Lord of Fortune. That's what I wanted to get to. Think about Creflo Dollar. That's all he, he preached about. A lot of these TV preachers and people like that talk about fortune. They don't get you to get back to the scripture. Even T.D. Jakes. No, he, he, he tried to get General Jennings uh, 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 not to talk about homosexuality, right? He tried to get him not to talk about these certain things, but this is what the father is against and what, he, what we are supposed to be teaching if you are a man of Yah. But if you're not speaking against these things or just telling the truth about things so people can have a real understanding and understanding and understanding of the information coming from the scripture, you're not doing the job of the father. You're actually doing the job of Baal, Baal, Satan, the Lord, as, they, as he's mainly putting it, or as they say, God. Because anything can be a God, right? What does it say back here? I just shared with y'all the other day in 1 John 4. 1 John 4. I think that's 4 and 4, I think. First John 4, I'm just going to hit it real quick. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Sometimes it takes me there. First John 4. First John 4, right over here when it states, um, it states, um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. You see? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. See, the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of what God? Because we know that Jesus wasn't his true name. So then what God is you, is you know that you're, you're confessing to? As it said. That Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What God? Satan. 
some type of demonic angel. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. What God are we talking about? Now you got to understand the manipulation of what's being given here for you to believe something compared to the truth or the lie. The truth or the manipulation, should I say. Because the whole world is true according to the blessing and the curses. You're either going to be a part of the blessings or you're going to be a part of the curses. But it's up to you to study to find out where you stand and where you are. It's not of Yah or God. And this is that spirit of, they say, Antichrist. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Then it goes to say, ye are of God, which we don't know what God is speaking of, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. But what is it that is in you? How many people call themselves Christians today? Verse 5. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear of them. Yeah, all y'all people that love basketball, baseball, hockey, uh, basketball, baseball, hockey, uh, uh, all these different sports. That's all worldly stuff. Now, we know certain things you do as a job to keep money on your table or to keep money to keep a roof over your head. But a lot of y'all love these games, which is actually from the, uh, the uh, gladiators. They're just a watered-down version of the gladiators. People are still cheering for the fight. It's a game but they're a fight. Y'all got to y'all got to open your eyes to see things spiritually. Now, six and last verse: We are of God, and say, He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Yes, yeah, this is how we do know it by studying the manipulations. Came in, came the the manipulations can't, man can't manipulate you if you know the word. You can't be the manipulator if you know the word and if the spirit is upon you to lead and guide you. So let's get back over here. So we just shared with you, we started with Psalms chapter um, 64 and 3. Is it 64? 84. Uh, I think it is 64. I, 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 look at me. I slipped my mind just that quick. 38 and 4. Is that it? Psalm so 30 and oh. Sixty-eight and 4. That's what it is. 68 and 4. Let me see if we can get to that real quick. I want to make sure I'm saying it right because it hit me right then. See how the spirit be dealing with me? 68 and 4. That's it. There you go. 68 and 4. We started with Psalm 68 and 4. Well, actually 1 through 4. How we got to start understanding the name and the names that we were sharing according to what the, the guy was saying and what we should be calling the Father and, and looking at what was put in here instead of what was mainly should be said. But we got to remember, that's why the Father said, you got to search him with your whole heart, your whole mind. See, even though the words has changed, the story is still true. You got to understand the story of the law and the prophet. Now, the New Testament, the story has been manipulated. The prophet came, did some of the work there, but some things have been changed and modified. That's what people got to understand. But this is where the Spirit starts to lead and guide you. If you choose to study and understand what the Father is leading and guiding you to, but you have to study the law. Now, as I was saying, Isaiah 44, we're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah 44 and 1 is going to give you more information of what I'm sharing with you. Isaiah 44 and 1 said, The Spirit of Yah to be on Israel. The Spirit of the Father is going to be on Israel. 
That's why I say Israel, only you have I known. Amos uh, uh, 3, Amos 3, 1 and 2. 1, 2 and 3, really, but 1 and 2. But let's go ahead and let's keep it right here so we won't get out of the sight of YouTube over here. All right. Right here, the spirit of Yah to be on Israel. Yet now here, O Yaakov, which is Jacob, O Yaakov, my servant. See, Jacob is his servant. See, it said the two witnesses. Jacob is his servant, which is dead Israel. And Israel, as we're going to come to see, Yahshua, but it's going to say, yet, this is chapter 44, Isaiah 44 and 1. Yet now here, O Yaakov, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. See, Israel is the spirit to Israel upon man. When the father chosen, this is the spiritual way that we, we, those are, that's the separation. Jacob is dead Israel who don't keep the law. Israel is the ones who do keep the law. That's why right here it said, whom I have chosen. Yet now here, oh Jacob, my servant. Jacob is the servant. We're still his servant because we're going to wake up. Many of these that Jacob have did. Who, who was Jacob? Let's, for example, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, uh, uh, Harriet Tubman, um, um, we just say the uh, the um, the uh, prophet, Muhammad, I'm saying prophet Muhammad, don't know if he was or wasn't, just gonna say it because of what the father has used them for. Um, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, mainly the people, mainly most of the people, the prophets that's been in this in this country and the ones that's in the scripture. Yet now, with prophets and the workers or servants, should I say. These are the servants didn't know who they were. That's why it says, yet now here, O Jacob, my servant. Y'all called my servant. Israel is his servant, even though they don't even know. We're climbing Jacob's ladder. Everything we do, we stand on the, on the shoulders of our ancestors. We can say forefathers, everyone said, you stand on the shoulders of your ancestors. This is why we're where we are today and we're still growing. This is Jacob's ladder. Do you remember the story of Jacob's ladder? Jacob was standing at the bottom. The father was at the top. Yes, angels ascending and descending on and off the ladder. And these angels was Jacob, the chosen, and uh, I'm sorry, the, the servants, Jacob the servants, and Israel whom the father has chosen. Verse 2. Thus says Yah that made thee from the womb, See, that formed thee, shall I say. Let me rephrase that. Thus said Yah that made thee and formed thee from the womb. And I say, what womb? Rebecca. When Rebecca was told by the Father, by the Creator, by the universal consciousness, that you have two nations and two type of people in thy womb. And the elders should serve the younger. But if you don't understand the... Uh, the um the first should be last and the last should be first. You don't understand that the first that first one that got his prophecy through Isaac, his father, is going to be last to have the dominion. The last that has got the uh, uh, prophecy from his father Isaac, which is Esau, shall be first to have the dominion, which is the dominion of the earth. A lot of people don't have no understanding or understanding, but that's what it is. And there we go. Thus said Yah that made thee for that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Yaakov, which, like I said, dead Israel, fear not, O Yaakov, my servant, and Yashurol or Yashurun, whom I have chosen, which is we call Israel. Some people say Israel is not the name. Israel may not be the name. Yashurol may be the name. We just come to know about who we are according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. So Yeshurun, Yashara, one or the other, that may be the true name of the children of Israel that was changed from Yaakov to Yashara or Yashurun. But other than that, we've the world come, we've come to know that Israel is what's being said. Whom I have chosen. This is who the Father has chosen. Verse 3, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. 
That water is the spirit. That's the spirit of God that he's going to anoint us with in the last days. And that's us as a nation and we're going to grow. See, it was sprinkles here and there with the prophets that came, the servants that came, but now we're going to know who we are. I, uh, I will pour my spirit. See, what I just tell you. Verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Then he said, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. That's the one I'm just telling you about. The sprinkle is the ones in the ancestors and certain ones that happened. But the ones that he said, about, he will pour, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 32. And if you want to look at a New Testament, Acts, 2nd chapter, 17 through 21st verse. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, which is your offspring, what we call children, and my blessing upon thine offspring. Look at that. See, I didn't read that. So I did, I'm, I'm just hitting it as we go, which is the offspring. And my blessings upon thine offspring. Verse 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Verse 5. One shall say, now this is what's happening today. A lot of y'all see it, a lot of y'all not paying attention. One shall say, I am the Lord. See, that's the Christians. That's Yaakov. One shall say, I am the Lord. And another shall call himself by the name of Yaakov. Another going to start, they're going to start calling themselves by the name of Israel, Israel, Yashra. And another shall subscribe with the hand unto the Lord. Now you're beginning, you're becoming nationalized. You're describing, you're prescribing being, now you're becoming national by the hand. I don't have now one of my, I know where to go get it, but I want to, I got no pen over here with me. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Yisrael or Yashara or Yesharan. But the point is, they're going to start recognizing themselves by that. Why? Being nationalized. I keep telling you, you got to get nationalized to come out from under this system. If you don't, you're going to always be a part of this system. And when the system go down, you are connected with them still. You have to stand in your sovereign status. There's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. You're either sovereign or you're a citizen. You're either sovereign, meaning that you are free. Sovereign is another word for being free. Or you're a citizen, which is another word for being a slave, which is the ward of the state. Of the state. You're going to stay a citizen? That's your choice. You come sovereign and stand in it? That's your choice. It's all your choice. With his name hand, uh, unto the Lord, and so name himself by the name of Israel. Verse 6, the last verse at this point. Thus said Yah, the king of Yisrael, Yashara, Yasharan, the king of, see, the spiritual point of Yaakov. Thus said Yah, the king of Yashara, and his redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Uh -uh. And his redeemer, Yah of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Y'all hear that? The father said, the creator said, besides him, there is no God. But Yah worshiping Jesus. Yah worshiping Emmanuel. Yah worshiping Louis Farrakhan. Yah worshiping uh, the prophet Muhammad. Y'all worshiping Yahshua. Y'all don't realize y'all in idolatry. Again, verse 6. Thus said Yah, the king of Israel, and his redeemer. He's the one who redeemed Israel. The Say, Yah of hosts, I am the first. Yah say, I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no Yah, God. Now, on that point, all this, all spirits are the Father. 
The father said he gonna, he's going to judge you by your idol in your mind. See, when you get judged by things that when he give you the scriptures to show and you choose to go against them and still believe in an idol, the father's going to answer you by that idol himself. Right? That idol today is quote unquote Jesus. What the world has been taught through the Roman Empire. And then when we come to find out that his name was not Jesus, that his name was actually Yahshua, the prophet that came, that prophet was no different than all the other prophets that came. But people are still holding on to the mindset of what was put to them in the New Testament. Once you come to understand, understand that no man can die for your sin, you're on the right track right then. Then you're starting to Shed, you might as well say like a snake. You're starting to shed that Christianity off of you. You're starting to grow out of that. You're starting to blossom like a, 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 a caterpillar uh, in a cocoon to a butterfly. Now you can start to fly with the knowledge. Now let me go into 44 on, on, another, on another point, cause seven on down to 20. 7 down to 20 in 44 gives you idolatry that people are actually living in, what they went through. But now let me go ahead to 21. I'm taking the 21, I believe the 24 is it or 23? To 23. Because 24 starts with uh, we start with chapter 45 but you have to read into it to understand it. You have to understand the scriptures. Okay. Right after this, then we'll go to part 2. Because we already an hour and something in, but I know Instagram, you're a little short because you stopped twice. So, but other than that, 40, Isaiah 44 and 21. Remember this, O Yaakov, and Israel. See the two? The two witnesses? Remember this, O Yaakov, which is dead Israel, and Israel, which is the anointed and the chosen. For thou art my servant. You see that? Who does he talk about in uh, Isaiah chapter 53? The suffering servant? Israel, no. Actually, Yaakov and the prophets. Now, all the prophets were suffering. They suffered trying to show the people the truth. And if y'all know some of the things that Jose went through, Ezekiel went through, Jeremiah went through. I really can't remember too much that Isaiah went through suffering. But Jeremiah... Ezekiel, Jose, I can definitely tell you they did some suffering. Remember these, O Yaakov, and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. The Father is saying this and showing you what has happened between between 1 and 6 and 21 and 23 because 7 through 20 is what has happened and representative of what has happened in this day and time. I'm not y'all can go back and read verse 7 through 20. But that right there is 21. Remember these, O Yaakov and Israel, for thou art my servant. Let me hit this real quick. I just want to hit verse 1. This is what people don't get. Isaiah 53. This is what people don't get right here. The suffering servant. Verse 53. Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He just told you who his servant was. Chapter 53 is talking about the suffering servant. Israel is the suffering servant. The prophets in Israel is the suffering servant. The servants of Israel are the suffering servants as a nation and individuals through the things that they went through. If you can't open your mind and start to see he's talking about us as a nation, you're going to be stuck thinking about the religion that was given to you by the Romans, thinking that this is talking about the man in the New Testament. Only. Because he did go through certain things, but the father said that 
he would not uh, 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 cause the just to go through certain things like that, if you know the law. But let's just finish up right here. Should not be gotten, forgotten to me. Verse 44 and 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. The Father said he has redeemed us. I've been redeemed. I went through my spiritual awakening. That's why I can share with you what I'm talking to you about. 22, one more time. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Verse 23. Sing, O ye heavens, for the for Yah have done it. Yes, he did. For Yah have done it. Let me do this. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest and every tree therein. For the uh oh, let me say, for the for Yah has redeemed Yaakov. And glorify himself. If you see that, he redeemed dead Israel. This is where you become awoken. See, you have to start studying the law so you can get the spirit within you, so the spirit can lead and guide you in the law. That's how you become redeemed. When the Father uh, uh, placed that, placed the spirit from within and start to grow that spirit, it grows within the law. But it's up to you to get it. 23 one more time and 24 last, uh, 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 no, there's 23. 23 last verse. No, I'll go to 24. Yeah, I'll go to 24. Matter of fact, 24. Oh, this right here, uh, the 24. I could take it all the way down to 20, uh, 26, but mainly, I just cut it off right there at 23 for a purpose. Sing, O ye heavens, for the for Yah have done it. Shout ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest and every tree therein. For Yah have redeemed dead Israel, which is Jacob, Yaakov, and glorified himself in Israel, glorified himself in the anointed of Israel, because he's glorifying himself by using Israel to glorify himself by showing everybody the truth. No different than what he's doing with me, with the spirit upon me, doing right now with the spirit of truth that's coming through me as a vessel to you. Verse 24, thus said Yah, thy redeemer, and he, and he that formed thee from the womb, which is us, I am Yah that make of all things that stretching forth the heavens alone. See that? Alone. That spread abroad by the earth by myself. The Father said he did that. And all he had to do was speak into an existence. Verse 25. That frustrated the tokens of the liars. A lot of people trying to say Jesus did this and that. Jesus this, Jesus that, Jesus was in the beginning, Jesus here, Jesus there, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Even they took Jesus out the way and put Yahshua there. Yahshua didn't do it. Yah did it. And Yah has placed his anointed spirit upon man. That's Christ. That's Messiah. And those who have the anointed spirit upon them is a Messiah. Or is a Christ. Christianity and Christian was made up to throw you off. 25. That frustrated the tokens of the liars and make of diviners mad. That turn of wise men backwards and make of their knowledge foolish. Ignorant. Make their knowledge foolish. Oh man. The courts are saying, a corpus delecti, if you ran a light or if you, you did a mistake by running a light, you get a ticket for anything other than hurt, harm, or damage someone's property, they say you damaged the state. 
you damaged the state. You ain't hurt, harm, or did anything, but they said you didn't damage the state. You ain't did. They're liars. Make their, their, their sentence and everything foolish. And making their knowledge foolish, as I was just sharing with you. Verse 26. That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. This messengers is the prophets. Israel is his servants and the people that's doing his will. That performeth the counsel of the messengers, of his messenger, that said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Yehuda, ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. The Father going to raise it up. And how he going to do it? Through man. 27, the last verse. That said to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up And I will dry up thy rivers. All right. So this is going to be the end of part one. Right here. Because we've gone over an hour. Uh, with some of the information. But we're going to come back with a little bit more information. And I'm thinking about calling this. Um, I said it earlier. I had it in my mind. Because this whole point is. Um, it's not actually the name of Yah. not the name of Yah. It's the understanding of words. The understanding of information. I like that. The understanding of information. The understanding of information. I think that would be good for this tonight because we have to understand and I like to say understand but understand for those who, who may not understand what I'm sharing with you. So we have to understand the words of the Father through his scriptures. Mm. Well, I'm going to say the understanding, I forgot what I was going to say. Something else came to my mind. The understanding of knowledge or the understanding of, I don't want to say understanding of words because well, I guess I can start back with that so we can understand certain words because, yeah, I got something else. I'm going to come back on part two. So we we'll call this the understanding of words. I guess that'll be good. The understanding of words we're going to go by right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pause over here on um, we're going to pause over here on um, We're going to pause over here on Zoom, and we're going to come back. You're the full version, so I'm just going to pause you, and then we're going to come back in, and we're going to say bye to part one. And I don't know what it is for, uh, it's still part one for me to, for uh, Instagram, but we're going to say uh, goodbye to part one um, on these over here on Instagram and YouTube. Then we're going to start with part two. So I'll be right back in a moment. Ooh. Wonderful you are. That's my jam right there, y'all. Oprah Water, y'all.
Welcome back, everybody, for part two. And what this is called tonight is understanding knowledge and words. That's what we're calling tonight's information here at here on Fight Fire with Truth. Fight Fire with Truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is quite fire with truth. And tonight is where where's the night? Now the night after the uh after the first the first day of the week, which is it's commonly called Sunday. And the day was called July 14th, 2024. Tomorrow I have a Zoom meeting or Zoom case, which is actually my last appeal. Y'all know what I do, so hopefully y'all be around to check it out. We'll go from there. So other than that, since tonight we shared information. Understanding knowledge and words. The reason why is because I'm going to play what I played earlier to start off the conversation. I'm going to play that in a few moments so we can see where everybody's mind is at on this point. Okay. 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 All right. One of my tracks. I like this part of this uh, song. Oh, that's right. No, no one. Pause there for a minute. Pause there for a minute. And like I said, this is the reason. This mug has stopped again. Live has stopped. I don't know what is going on with the, with this Instagram. I do not know what's going on with this Instagram tonight. And for some reason, I think some, I think someone is handling. Okay, now we got Instagram coming back on again. Okay, Instagram, you just got through stopping for the third or fourth time tonight. And uh, we're going to get back started, as I was about to say. we This is part two. Um, as I'm saying, this is part two. And this is um, July 14, 2024. And this is, tonight is called, uh, which is also in, in the information, um, Fight Fire with Truth. Fight, fire with truth. And as I was just about to say to YouTube, Zoom, and before you just cut off again, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I'm going to start off with the reason why we're on words tonight, on certain words, because the information he's going to share, some of this I did know about the word Lord. We shouldn't use the word Lord, but we also got to know we got to bring, we got to kind of sin to bring other people up. So we got to understand the creator is over it all anyway. The creator, let me say this real quick. Let me give y'all this real quick. Right here, I'm just going to give, I'm going a, I'm to a cherry pick real quick on this one. This is Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7, I'm right here at it. Isaiah 45 and 7 states, this is the Father speaking. Okay. Let me break it down. Now, he was talking to Cyrus here, but this is him speaking his words. Even though he's speaking to the Cyrus right here, we started verse one down to seven. Go ahead and break it down since I'm here. Uh, Isaiah 45, one through seven. Thus said Yah to his anointed, to his anointed, 
to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding. See, thus said Yah to it, the Father has anointed Cyrus, even though Cyrus didn't even know the Father. Because Israel only knew the Father, because the Father only gave Israel his law after it was spoken down and people forgotten about it throughout time. Excuse me, that just came out of nowhere. Thus said Yah to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him. His father speaking through or to Cyrus. This is a charge to Cyrus. And I will loose the loins of, of kings to open before him the two lead gates. Verse, uh, and the gates shall not be shut. The gates shall not be shut. Verse 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I just shared that last night. I shared that last night uh, on information showing that this, between the spirit and Yahshua, Yahshua is just another prophet that had the spirit upon him, no different than all the other prophets. And that's what I'm talking about. I, the Father said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. Who is that? That's Greek and Rome, if you understand the scriptures. Verse 3, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and, say, and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, Yah, which call thee by thy name, am the Father Yah of Israel. I'm trying, not, I'm, trying not, I'm trying to get out of the word God, even though that we know this is the reason why we're saying word today, because in part one, I share in part one the situation at hand and what the brother's going with the brother, I'm saying brother, he shared with us. Plus, I already knew, because I, I went when I was in the house of Israel. I went from saying God to El to Adonai to Almighty, and I was just going further on that point, but now that I have to start speaking to others, I have to condescend in order to get to where they are to bring them up. No different than what we're doing tonight. And I will give thee the treasures, verse 3 again, of darkness, and say, and hidden riches of, of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the am Yah of Israel. And the Father, the universe's consciousness of Israel. Verse 4. For Jacob is my servant. He keeps saying that Jacob is his servant. The suffering servant is Jacob. Jacob is the one who don't know and hasn't been keeping the law. As it states right here. For Jacob is my servant. Uh, for Jacob my servant's sake. And Israel my elect. See, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Who is the chosen? The elect. Israel. Jacob is his servants. They are called to do a work. And who is part of that work? Like I said, Marcus Garvey. Nat Turner. That's another name I keep slipping. Nat Turner. Marcus Garvey. Uh, uh, a noble Jew Ali. Prophet Muhammad, or I, I like to just say Muhammad. The Muhammad that actually started the nation of Israel, and maybe the Prophet Muhammad, I can't say him a, a year and there on him or not, or not. But also uh uh Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Even Farrakhan. They all are Israel doing the work. I don't know how far on point or off point they are, but they're doing their work. They're Israel doing work. Who didn't know who they were, who didn't know who they are, who they were. But they have a job to do spiritually. These are his elect, Yaakov, or quote unquote Jacob. Verse 5. Oh, let me start back and forth. For Yaakov, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee 
though thou hast not known me. This here is talking about Cyrus, as he spoke of in verse uh, 1. Verse 6, that they may know from, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides Yah, me, which is Yah. I am Yah and there is none else. All y'all keep thinking that Jesus had to die for your sin, Yahshua and all Y'all are in idolatry and y'all are in uh, y'all are in wickedness. Whether y'all believe it or not, you hear what the word is saying. And there is, I am Yah and there is none else. Seven and last verse to show you that the Father is all things. He causes these things to happen purposely. Why? Why he do these things purposely? Because he had to show his work. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yah, do all these things. The Father does all these things. So no matter what you do, that you think that, that, that the evil that comes about, there's a purpose behind it. There's a purpose and a cause of everything that happens. There's a purpose for everything that goes on in this earth. And there's anything that happens is not without the Father's knowing about it. So if someone passes and you don't know why, it's the Father's will that it happened. If anything happened, it's the Father's will that that happened. Certain things happen on your choice, though. The Father don't make you do anything. The only time you become of the Father is when you're sighing and crying, as it speaks of in the sequel chapter 9. If you're sighing and crying and you're wanting to do the Father's word and will, and you're seeking his way and you're seeking his knowledge, then he'll be found of you or you will be found of him. Until then, you're doing your own will unless you're here for a purpose that the Father already anointed you before you came out the womb to do a will. Now, I just wanted to show you that to let you understand where we're going to go right here. We're not supposed to be calling upon the name God. I'm going to show you. So I'm reading from the book of Enoch, which was removed from our Bibles. This is referring to a type of angels and their names. And the third was named Godriel, or shortened would be God. He it is who shown the children of men all the blows of death. And he led astray Eve. So this is literally talking about Satan, the one who led astray Eve, right, in the garden. His true name is God Rio, which shortened would be God. Now, if you go on Google and you type in God definition, you'll see this little name pop up next to it, G-A-D, God, the same way it's pronounced in Enoch with that little vowel point above the A. Now look at this. Baal God means Lord of Fortune. Why do you think on the back of our money it says, in God we trust? It's not talking about the Most High of the Bible. It's a reference to Satan, the evil one. Now check this out. Every time you see Baal in the scriptures, it actually is just the Hebrew word for Lord. So we're not supposed to be calling him Lord either. All right, go into the Blue Letter Bible, click on Baal, and you will see it literally means Lord, which is the name they planted over the name Yahuwah 7,000 times in the scriptures. Every time you see in all caps, the Lord, it was originally his name, Yahuwah. If you don't believe me, go fact check me. I have studied to show myself approved, and I'm just revealing to you guys what I have found. Don't shoot the messenger. Now, remember what I said. We're not supposed to be calling him Lord because it actually means Baal. Go to Jeremiah 23, verse 27. His true name is Yermiyahu, who attempt to cause my people to forget my name for Baal or Lord. Remember, guys, Satan is literally the father of lies. Look at this. However, the word Baal means 
Lord, look it up. Satan's true name is God. We're not so I just wanted to say that again this time before I go into the next word that I wanted to share with you, right? The next word I wanted to share with you, I wanted to show you that this is the reason why I'm on this situation where we're at right now today. And it's certain things that I want to share with you at this point are the words, other information that we need to know. What's the etymology definition for Christ? Christ, you ain't saying this thing. The word Christ, no, uh-uh, no, I said etymology. The word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed one. That's what it says. It is derived from the Greek verb prio, which means to anoint. The Greek Septuagint Christos was used to translate the Hebrew word Messiah, which also means anointed, it says, it says anointed one, which actually means, just so you can see it, it says anointed one, but it actually means the anoint. The anoint, anointed, or anointing. They shut me up. Well, not shut me up. They, I see they ain't put it on there the way I, let me try it again. The etymology definition of Christ. Hmm. So they ain't saying they got I know this thing ain't, ain't quiet on me now. Hold on. The etymology definition of Christ. Oh, it's on. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead with that one more time. This AI overview. Hold on, I'm going to see why his mother is not saying anything. Usually, uh, They ain't saying a word. Now, I'm surprised they ain't saying. Usually, I, I, uh, she'll read it off. The etymology definition of Christ, again, it says, the word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. It says anointed one, that only means anoint. Anoint, anointed, or anointing. It is derived from the Greek verb krio, which means to anoint. That's all Christ means. It means to anoint. In Greek Septuagint, Christos was used to translate the Hebrew word Messiah. See that? Which also means anoint. See, they say anointed one. They throw that one in there to throw the world off. It only means to anoint. When you christen a boat, it doesn't say anointed one. You can't just christen the only boat. You christen it to anoint it. Meaning they use a bottle of champagne to anoint it. You have to have understanding and understanding to understand what's going on. I'm just shocked this mug is not, I don't, I don't hear no, um, hold on. Okay, it's on. They didn't caught on, they didn't caught on what I was doing earlier. But I'm surprised the voice isn't on. But let me check. Now, let me do my next one. What's the etymology definition for Messiah? They ain't saying nothing. But I got it. the word Messiah comes from the he from the Hebrew word mm -hmm. 
Mashiach, which means anointed. It says one again, but it only means to anoint or anointed or anointing. It entered the English language through Old English, Late Latin, and Greek. In the Old Testament, the word appears about 50 times, but it usually refers to three different uh, figures in the history of the Israelites. Rather than a savior or redeemer in Jude uh, Judaism, the Messiah is expected to be a king from the line of David, who will free Israel from foreign rule and restore his former glory, its former glory. See that? That's what it's saying. But you have to have understanding. Now, if they don't know the Father, how can they tell you? How can they tell you something that they don't know? All right? I'm going to hit it again. Uh -oh. The word Messiah comes from the Hebrew word Messiah, M-A-S-I-A-H, which means anointed. It says one, but it doesn't mean anointed one. It means the anointed because all the prophets was anointed. Israel itself as a nation was anointed. The land of Israel is the anointed of the creator. All the vessels of the father is anointed. The, the place of worship was anointed. Certain people, which were the Levites, was anointed, like the priests, the Levites. See, you have to understand what, what who, and the understand, understanding of certain things. And if you don't have the inner understanding, you don't have the, the, the full understanding of it. But again, they said, the word Messiah comes from the Hebrew word Mashiach, Mashiach, my wife said, which means anointed one. It entered the English language through Old English, Late Latin, and Greek. In the Old Testament, the word appears about 50 times, but it usually refers to three different figures in the history of the Israelites. You see that? Rather than a savior or redeemer, in, Jude in Judaism, the Messiah is expected to be a king from the line of David who will free Israel from foreign rule and restore its former glory. And that's the anointed spirit. The anointed, the anointed spirit will land upon man to restore the glory. How? When you come upon man, man will start to learn the word, and this is how it is restored, by doing and understanding the word. Now, let's go to the next word. What's the etymology definition for gospel? Well, they got it spelled here, but they I'm surprised this thing is not saying anything for some odd reason. But it says, the word gospel comes from the old English word God spell. G-O-D-S-P-E-L. It's a spell. Which is a combination of the words God and spell. Meaning good story or good tidings. It is a translation of the Greek word E, I, mean, I, I couldn't. I, that's why I wanted the uh, the AI to read it, but it's not doing it for some odd reason. Elagiglan Gilon, whatever, which is made up of two words: EU meaning good and Angula meaning message. Angula Angulan, I can't say the word, so it's E U A G E U A N G E L I O N. Just look it up. The etymology. This is the beginning of words. Can mean good news, good telling, or a reward for bringing good news. In the New Testament of the Bible, English translators use God's spell to translate both the, e the E-U-A-N-G-E-L-I-O-N and the E-U 
A N G E L I Z O M A I, which means to proclaim the good news. What good news? What good news? God's spell came out of nowhere. The gospel, which is God's spell, it's a spell, which is the spell of the Father that said, if you didn't keep my law, I'm going to send you in the land you know not. There you will serve other gods, wooden, stone, gods your fathers have known. What's the God of today? Jesus. Who are they putting in Jesus' place now that they've taken, that actually did the story, they modified the story, whose name was Yahshua, and they gave you Jesus. This is what I keep trying to get you to understand until you get it and understand it. Believe me, you are in idolatry. So I'm going to read this one more time. The word gospel comes from the old English word God spell. Look at it in the first and second line. Look at it. Y'all can pause this in the first and second line. Look at it in the first and second line. God spell. G-O-D-S-P-E-L. Where did that word come from? See, this is the whole point about knowledge and words. A lot of people don't know where a lot of this stuff comes from. They just read it and accept it for what it is. Gospel is not in the law. The God spell is not in the law. But it is that the fact that the Father said that if you didn't keep my law, I'm going to send you the land and you know not. There you will serve other gods, wooden, stone, gods your fathers haven't known. Where you at today? You in the land, even if this land is ours, the land on top of this land is not our land. This is another, this is the Roman Empire on top of our land. People don't get it. People don't understand, and people love being in idolatry and in ignorance. People love being there because you try to share it with them they choose not to adhere nor try to get an understanding. Excuse me, y'all. can't pull the other hand, so I'm going to do it like this. There we go. There we go. You know, this open water pretty good. I got to get back to health. Oak alkaline water that is. So, as I was just sharing with you, I'm going to read this one more time before we move on. Understanding of words. So, when, when I'm about to jump ahead. The word gospel comes from the old English word God spell, which is it has been a spell put over the whole earth, which is a combination of the words good and spell, God and spell. Words God and spell, meaning good story. See that? This is the reason why Jesus' story is the greatest story ever told. That's why, and they put it right in your face, and you can't even see it. That's how come it's a spell. No different than the Jews tell you that uh, they're giving you human meat and rat meat and stuff like that in these fast food restaurants. They say that, and you just, okay, well, it's going over my head. I'm going to go get some more with this rat and human meat, flesh, or shall I say. Y'all go still eat that stuff. Y'all know the day we end. The poison that they're giving to the people. They're injecting chickens. They're giving up. I just, matter of fact, oh boy, I think I saved it. I like the, the fact that Father gave me, I'm just talking on this right now, but I'm giving you an understanding of where we at, the things that's going on, and what the system is doing to the people. But y'all don't want to hear y'all. Y'all like living in your best life, doing what you're doing, not paying attention. Let me go ahead and read this off before I give you what I'm about to give you. 
The word God's gospel mean, uh, uh, comes from the old English word God spell, which is a combination of the words God and spell, meaning good story or good tidings. It is a translation of the Greek word E-U-A-N-G-E-L-I-O-N. I can't say it, so I ain't going to try. I don't remember how to say it. Which is made up of the words E-U, meaning good, and look like Angela. It like to say Angela, A-N-G-E-L-I-A, -E meaning message. Euangelon, I'll just go ahead and say it the way I believe you said. Euangelon can mean good news, good telling or a or a good reward for bringing good news in the new testament of the bible english translators used god's god's god spell g-o-d-s-p-e-l they don't say gospels they say god spell to translate both e angelion and you angelion zomaya let me, re, re, let me read both of them. English translators use gospel, God spell. Let me say gospel, God spell to, to translate both E U A N G E L I O N and E U A N G E L I Z O M A I, which means to proclaim the good news. See, this is what the this is what they use in Greek, which is the third and fourth generation. The third is Greek. They hate the Creator, and this is where they gave gave you this information. The God spell. They don't say gospel. G O S P E L. The God G O D spell S P E L. So, me giving you that now. I doubt I done done that. Let me go back to what I was going to go to a little earlier, or a few moments ago. Got to get back into here. Hope you don't take too long because I'm more into it now to give you. Now, while I was telling you about the food, if y'all can't see the day we in right now, if y'all can't see the day we in, the stuff that's going on, what they're doing to the people, here we go right here. I'm going to share a little something with you. I want y'all to check this out. This is what's going on today and the stuff that's happening. And if y'all can't see what's happening and they're telling you the things that's going on, they're putting it in your face and you choose to stay ignorant. Ezekiel chapter 33. The father sent a watchman to warn you of him because the father is bringing the stuff, but he's allowing it to happen. So it's not the actual father that's bringing it. It's the people who's in place that's bringing it, but the father is allowing it to happen. That's why he can say it, that he's doing it. He's over it all. When he allows it, whether well, he wants it to happen or not, but if he allow it, it is what it is. It's the Father. Just like when the people were doing what they doing and the Father came on Moses. Moses, why is you doing this now? It's the people out there. He didn't turn and say, the, he came to Moses. When the, when there's the people in charge of the household who do, who's supposed to be the head of that household? They're the one who's going to be at fault. Because you're supposed to have your house in order. If you ain't got your house in order, that means there's chaos in the camp in your house. And if you and your wife ain't getting along as one, running like a well-oiled machine, your house is out of order. But let me get back to sharing what you're about to share with you. This right here. What is going on in the grocery stores in America? I've never seen this before. Tell me what's going on in Coke. This is the third six pack that I've gotten that does this. They're they're not carbonated and they're they're flat. Like, if I wanted Pepsi, I would have bought Pepsi. What is happening? There's something weird in this little. Your sauce should not be there. Yeah, see that. On the grocery store. Like you see that? What is that? Seriously, what is going on? First of all, I soaked this meat 
in the vinegar and we also changed color like you went from pink to brown so i was like okay maybe it's just the vinegar that got in there but why does this be holographic anybody ever seen an asparagus like this check this out brush on the box look at this what the hell have you ever seen like this i have never seen an asparagus like that before Oh, so this used to be an apple. What the fuck is this? That's not an apple I've ever seen. This was an apple. It's it's still. What is going on in the grocery stores in America? I've never it's seen this before. Tell me what's going on in Coke. This is the third six pack that I've gotten that does this. They're, they're not carbonated and they're... They're flat. Like, no if I wanted Pepsi, I would have bought Pepsi. What is happening? There's something weird in this little. You know what I mean? Sauce to My brownish was moving like that. Do you see that? What is that? Seriously, what is going on? First of all, I soaked this meat in the vinegar and we also changed color. Like, you went from pink to brown. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just the vinegar that got in there. But why does this be holographic? Anybody ever seen an asparagus like this? Check this out. Brush on the box. Look at this. What the hell have you ever seen like this? I've never seen an asparagus like that before. Oh, so this used to be an apple. What the fuck is this? That's not an apple I've ever seen. This was an apple. It is. Still, what is going on in the grocery stores in America? I and this is what I'm talking about. If y'all can't see all the stuff that's going on around us and what this so-called government is doing to the quote-unquote food, and all the information that's being shared with you, something wrong with you. Something is definitely wrong with you and wrong with your mind. And if you can't see all the stuff that's going on, all kind of stuff is happening now. But people choose to stay blind. Just like that, just like I said, um, oh, let me get that. Oh, I'm, thank you, Father. See that? One well, other one I want to share with you. Hold on. Make sure y'all get this one. Hold on, hold on. Hold on one more, but I know I saved it. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. One moment. Oh, man, give me some. Make sure I come up on it. I don't want to just get anything. I want to make sure y'all get what I'm trying to show you. Hold on one moment, y'all. It's another one that just hit my mind. Coming up. Okay, I think this might be it. This one might be it. Yeah, I think this is it. Come on now, this is it. Oh, I'm getting. Hold on, y'all. But right here, just. Oh, wait, uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, which is the white And uh, when they come to the of the dock, where we uh, drain the blood. Uh, 
and uh, watch them die down. It's very similar to how we do uh, uh, the, uh, the the sacrifices that we do with the uh, kosher butchering, and uh, so we do that. And then uh, we mix it with the Passover bread, and so we eat the blood of our enemies. And the bodies, eh, we're not cannibals, so what we do is we take those, because we can make some chuckles, and we give them to the slaughterhouses, and those are pounds and pounds and pounds of meat that we grind up in the sausage and the hamburger, and that's why we made those the most popular thing, sausage for breakfast and hamburger for lunch. And so all the growing up out here are really eating their children. And uh, even when we say this outright and tell you people, if you don't believe it, the children of uh, our enemy, which is the white race, and uh, we bring them to the basement in the center docks where we uh, drain the blood and uh, watch them die there. It's very similar to how we do uh, uh, the, uh, the the sacrifices that we do with the uh, kosher butchery, and uh, so we do that. And then uh, we mix it with the Passover bread, and so we eat the blood of our enemies. And the bodies, eh, we're not cannibals, so what we do is we take those, because we can make some chuckles, and we give them to the slaughterhouses, and those are pounds and pounds and pounds of meat that we grind up in the sausage and the hamburger, and that's why we made those the most popular thing, sausage for breakfast and hamburger for lunch. And so all the growing up out here are really eating their children. And uh, even when we say this outright and tell you people, you don't believe it. So children of uh, our enemy, which is the white race, and uh, we bring them to the basements in the center docks where we uh, drain the blood and uh, watch them die there. It's very similar to how we do uh, uh, the, uh, the the sacrifices that we do with the uh, kosher butchery, and uh, so we do that. And then uh, we mix it with the Passover bread, and so we eat the blood of our enemies. And the bodies, eh, we're not cannibals. So what we do is we take those because we can make some chuckles, and we give them to the slaughterhouses, and those are pounds and pounds and pounds of meat that we grind up in the sausage and the hamburger, and that's why we made those the most popular thing, sausage for breakfast and hamburger for lunch. And so all the growing up out here are really eating their children. And uh, even when we say this outright and tell you people, you don't believe it. So children of uh, our enemy, which is the white race. All right. Now, guess what just went out? I guess it died out. Um, Instagram just died off. Yep, just went off. It's been having problems all day. But yeah, still it got what it got. But the point I'm getting at right now, now we're now we're in YouTube and we're on, on um on Zoom. So like it just went off all together. Might wasn't charging up as it should have been. Other than that, let me see if I can put another discharge here. Keep right. Either or. But the whole point of getting that is this. They're telling you that they're feeding you their, your own children. They're telling you what they're doing. These are the quote-unquote Jews, the synagogues of Satan. They're telling you what they're doing. And a lot of y'all choose to just ignore the situation. The scriptures is actually giving you information. And the people choose not to adhere, choose not to understand. But that's your choice. I was going to get into something, but since we own knowledge and the information on knowledge and words, and I was sharing with you that Israel. Israel is Yeshuan, and they may have changed the name, but the story is still the same when it comes from Genesis to Malachi. The story is still the same, but they may have changed the names. So it depends on where you are, where you stand, and what you plan to do. So other than that, let's see where we at. Okay, we got 46, 40 something minutes in here. So I just wanted to show you that information 
according to knowledge and words. No different than in the New Testament, right here, might as well get it. St. John. St. John. They say St. John. I just say John. Okay. Okay. But the actual part I'm looking for, I don't think it's here. But I'm looking for the word that said the word was made flesh. I don't remember exactly where that's at, but I will give you this. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, it's not was, the word is Yah. The word is Yah. Yah is his word and the word is Yah. Which says, in the beginning was the word. What word? It was the spirit. It wasn't the word, it was the spirit. And the spirit was with Yah, which is who? So you got to understand what that word is. That word is the spirit, which is the law. And that spirit with the, the, the anointing spirit amongst or with the Father. And the word was Yah. The word is Yah. But that anointing spirit was with Yah in the beginning. The same was in the beginning with Yah. You see that? You get that? And, uh, I should have did this. With, this is something that go with last night, yesterday. The same was in the beginning with Yah. All things was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's the Father. The Father made everything. But the Spirit is what moved upon the waters, which is the Spirit of Yah. Spirit of Yah, you'll find that in Genesis 1, verse 2. In him was life, and the life, and the life was the light of men. And there you go. That's the waters that the spirit moved upon. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. That's the people of today. And the people of the time old. The light is the law. The people that kept the law had the light. The ones who didn't dwelt in darkness. And that's just it. Then it talking about the true light. There was a man sent from Yah whose name was John. Okay, I ain't gonna go into all that. I just made one to go to one, two, one through five to get that point. To show the point is that the light is the law, and that was with the Father the whole time. I'm um, just reading some just came by. I just I went to uh I just opened up and you know the spirit just when the spirit when 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 the, when the scriptures fall, they fall. And I just fell on to Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. It says, And say, if we have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. That's Matthew 23 and 30. No different than the people today. So when the Father brings you somebody, when the Father leads people to you, you don't take heed to the word. Verse 32. Might well hit it right now since I'm here. I'm going to start back at 30. 
and say, if we, matter of fact, let me come on back just a little bit. I ain't going to go too far back. Yep. This is Matthew 23. I ain't went too far. Last, I think I stopped early, but I'm going to start at 24, 23, 28 right now. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Many people seem like that. But within, ye are full of hypocr hypocrisy and iniquity, which is sin. A lot of people like that today. 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Five the Pharisees and scribes is the one who gave you this New Testament. Or shall I say, might as well say five scribes and Pharisees, which is the uh, which is the uh, uh the council of Nicaea, Marcion, Luke, Mark. They didn't know, they didn't walk with, with the one called Christ. They didn't walk with the prophet. Even ye, even so ye say, even so ye are outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sceptres of the righteous. And garnish the, the sceptres of the righteous. Yeah, you do all that. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And that's what the same thing the people say and do today. And that's what they're doing. 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Verse 32. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. 33. Ye serpents, ye generations of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Same with today. As we were speaking about all those nations in part one in Isaiah chapter 83, now in Psalms chapter 83, all those nations that came up against Israel with one consent that took crafty counsel against thy hidden ones and thy people. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, verse 30, 33. How can ye escape the damnation of hell, which is Matthew 33, 34? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye, are, ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. I went through that. Then we begged, didn't I? Went through that myself. And persecute them from city to city. Y'all do it all the time because y'all don't know the law. Y'all know how y'all do it because y'all following this New Testament. Now, this is the Spirit speaking through the prophet. You got to understand what's speaking and what's happening because this is happening, meaning that this is true. Verse 35 that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah son of Barakias Bar son of Barakias whom ye slew between the temple and the altar 36 verily I say unto you all these things shall come upon this generation which is the Roman Empire I you I got Rome sitting right there. See that Rome right there? Right here. Right where about right there. Rome. I wrote Rome right there. Rome is this generation. A lot of people can't see it. Rome. Verse 37. No, that's all right. Because they, he was talking about, well, I was going 37, to, I go on to 39. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens. 
under her wings, and ye would not, and ye would not. See, that's the Spirit speaking. Y'all thinking it's Jesus, but this is the Spirit speaking through the prophet. 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. 39, the last verse. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Bliss is, the, is he that cometh in the name of Yah, which is the spirit of Yah. You can see I got that right there as well. See that right there? Which is the spirit of Yah. Bliss is he that come in a, see, and this is, that's what y'all don't understand. Verse 36 and 39 is two points that people don't understand because they're reading it verbatim for what it say. But you have no understanding or understanding of what the meaning behind it. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation, which is Rome, the Roman generation. That's where he had, because they was past Greek at that time, as far as I know. It could have been in the Greek or transferring from Greek to Rome. But 39 says, For I say unto you, For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth. Me is the spirit that was coming through the prophet. Henceforth, till ye shall say, Until ye shall say, Bliss is he, bliss is he that cometh in the name of Yah. And that's the spirit. Is me. That's the spirit talking the whole time. Y'all don't realize when Yahshua was speaking, it was the Spirit speaking through Yahshua. And this is what y'all don't understand. Yahshua, or not Yahshua, forgive me, the Spirit is back today amongst and within the people. But a lot of y'all won't get it. Y'all won't, y'all got because y'all have no understanding. Y'all have no understanding, and y'all may never get it. Until you ask the Father for the knowledge and information. I'm a watchman. Thank you, baby. I'm a watchman. And what I'm here to do is in Ezekiel chapter 2 and chapter 3. But let me give it to you real quick. Ezekiel chapter 2. Come on with you. Ezekiel 2. As soon as I get there. Ezekiel chapter 2 states, I was just about to cut, shut it down. Let me go to Ezekiel chapter 2 and give you what my purpose is. And chapter 3. Well, chapter 2 is going to give you this right here. The call of Ezekiel. Meaning the call of his servant or his prophet or what have you. And he said unto me, son of man. This is chapter 2, Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. The father is speaking unto me. No different than many others out here. I'm not the only one. Verse 2. And the spirit entered into, uh, entered into me when he spake unto me. And set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spake unto me. Three. And he said unto me. Son of man. I send thee to the children of Israel. To a rebellious nation. A rebellious nation. That has rebelled against me. Who is the father. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Even unto this very day. Unto this very day. Verse 4. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Yah. Thus saith Yah. How many people in the New Testament say that? Verse 5. And they, whether they were here or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, meaning a rebellious people. Ye shall know that there has been a prophet, yet shall know, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Verse 6, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. See that? What is this called tonight? 
understanding, knowledge, and words. And thou, son of man, verse 6 again, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though bearers and thorns be with thee, and thou doest love among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house, which is a rebellious people. Verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, my words, which is the Father's words, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Most rebellious. Verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. His word and what the spirit gives. Verse 9. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. These are the things that's going on today that has happened in the 3,000 years and the last 400 years. Verse 3 is the next part to it. It's a continuation. Chapter 3, the, co the commission of Ezekiel. The call of Ezekiel chapter 2, the commission of Ezekiel chapter 3, which is same as me and many others. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. Two, so I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. Verse 3, and he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Excuse me. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go eat thee, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. Y'all all know the speech that I'm speaking to you as well. And of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Verse 6. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose word thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. They would have listened. Because they're looking for the Father. But, verse 7, the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. They ain't going to listen to you because they ain't listening to me. But, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Don't want to listen. Eight. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their face, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. Nine, as an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house, though they be a rebellious house. Then it goes into moreover, verse 10, moreover he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. You know, the Father speak to you, you're speaking from the law and the prophets. 11. And go get ye to them of the captivity unto the children of, the, of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith Yah, where they will hear, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Verse 12. Then the spirit took me up, and I heard I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of Yah from his place. 13. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, 
and the noise of the wheels of over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. 14. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness. Excuse me. And I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of Yah was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv that dwell by the river of Chibar, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. Astonished. By all the stuff that he's seen. Responsibility of the prophet. This is your responsibility. This is Ezekiel 3, starting at verse 16, and your Ezekiel chapter 33. Verse 1 through 20, and um, 30 through 33. 1 through 20, then 30 through 33. The responsibility of a prophet. This is your responsibility. Once you come to know and understand your word, the father's word. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of Yah came unto me saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. You see that? Ezekiel 33. This is the responsibility of a prophet. I will say, uh, 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 uh. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. See, the Father said, give warning from him. That means he's over all things, as I shared with you in Isaiah chapter 45 a little bit earlier. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. You're going to be at fault. I'm out here sharing information, so I'm not going to be at fault because I'm putting it out there. And I'm putting it out there in a the way where the Father can lie God people to it that's going, going, going to receive it. And it's up to you to accept it or reject it. I give you scripture. I'm giving you what I was on top of my head unless I'm explaining something to you. Verse 19. If Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou shalt deliver thy soul. See that? 20. Again, when the when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. That stumbling block is something that you like, that you've made an idol. That's what that stumbling block is. That stumbling block is something that you like, but you ain't turned to the law to know you ain't supposed to do this or that. You're going to die. That almost happened to me. I was worshiping the girl not realizing it. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. You see that? I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing. I was in love with a young lady, not realizing I was in idolatry. Okay. Okay, it looked like we got we got we got um Okay. You can cut back on. I thought you was off. All right. Back to the story. Okay, we good. Boy, we Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Verse 20. Again, when the righteous man do have turned from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block, as I was just sharing with you, something you like, and what I was, like I said my, by myself as an example. Ten years. I just knew I was supposed to get away from her, but I was just connected with this young lady. I'm saying young lady because she was younger than me, but I was, as far as I knew, I was in love with her, and I was connected. But I heard the father say certain things, and I, I backed up, but I was still connected. 
glad you know how it is when you uh, you you connected, but you, you okay, okay. That's how I was. I was in what I think and call love. May have been lust, but I believe it was love. I don't know. But the whole thing is the spirit was telling me to leave her. And I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. 21 and last verse for the moment. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the right that the righteous sit that the righteous uh oh verse 21 again. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. See, you that's your responsibility. Once you become knowledgeable of the word, especially if you're a servant and a prophet, when you come knowledge of the word, you're supposed to go and warn the people. To keep the law. A lot of people are doing the Jesus thing. And this is where you are in error. And you are in error according to Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 1 through 8, then 9 through 11. Not going to read it. You have to see it and understand it. And you are in violation in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13 as well. We're about an hour and 12 in, hour and 13 minutes in. So not going to take hold you up no longer. I just gave you two scriptures to check out for yourself. Deuteronomy 13, excuse me. Huh. Deuteronomy 13, and what was the last one I just said? Ezekiel chapter 14, 1 through 11. One part is for man to come to a prophet, which is 1 through 8, and then 9 through 11 is if a prophet be deceived. So, other than that, I'd like to thank y'all for your time, your patience, your listening near, your seeing eye, and don't forget, I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who they're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead bed, which is really in their heads. For all of you who's living in the new, this is for you. I'm the same Mikael in Revelation 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwells, who deceiveth the whole world but prevaileth not, because the horn is blown without a doubt. This is prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. And we give ready to smile our way out. Smile, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. Baruch, Shekevo, Vakuto, Riolam, Vahe, Hear, O Israel, Yah, our Father, is one Father. Blessed be thy glorious kingdom forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word. Thank you for tonight. And right now, we'll get back started with a little bit of um, trap. All right. So, um, just let you know that I hope y'all enjoyed the information for tonight. You know, it's knowledge, un uh, understanding knowledge and words. Share with you Messiah. I share with you Christ. Both of them means anoint, anointed or anointing. And I also share with you the God spells.
Anytime you look up words, look up in, look them up in the etymology diction, etymology dictionary. This is where words started from, according to the English language. So, over here on Zoom, I thank you for your time, your patience, listening near, with your seeing eyes. Appreciate you, love you, and I'll see you soon, always. Yeah.